TH17 cells in particular are very interesting because they're part of our adaptive immune system. Um, so they have a protective function where they protect us from fungal infections and extracellular bacteria. Um, but at the same time, they can actually cause serious disease. They can, they can turn against us and make us sick in the sense that they're heavily implicated in autoimmune diseases. We had studied T17 cells previously at the population level, and uh, it became clear that despite we could learn a lot, that um, at any given time the population was very heterogeneous. Um, so they were all called TH17 cells, but they weren't exactly the same thing. I would say single-cell RNA-seq uh, allowed us to look at single cells, but then at a genome-wide scale. So previously, what you could do at the single-cell level was look at maybe a handful of markers that you would know of, but you would have to know which genes you would want to detect. When you do single-cell RNA-seq, you actually get your, your, your assaying the whole uh, transcriptome. So you're looking at all the genes being expressed in, in individual cells. It allows you to characterize cellular states um, because you're looking across the whole populations and you can get an idea of what type of cells are present in a, in a population that you thought previously were basically the same based on those five markers that you were looking at. So another great advantage of single cell uh, data is that you can now look at gene expression co-variation within single cells. That means that you can look at Given that I know that this gene is implicated in a pro-inflammatory response, you can start looking at other genes. Are they usually also upregulated when this gene is upregulated, or maybe they're always downregulated when this gene is, is downregulated? So you can start assuming that these genes, if they move together or move oppositely, they're sort of biologically bound in, in function. And that allowed us to prioritize genes to go after in terms of functional validations and that might be implicated in the pro-inflammatory behavior of pathogenic TH17 cells. The CD5 cell story turned out to be really exciting. So from the single cell story, we found that CD5 could be potentially a regulator of the different functions of the T cells. And in fact, what we showed is using the autoimmune disease model in the EAE, um, we actually showed that this is a major functional switch. So if TH17 cells without this molecule, they suddenly can turn on the pathogenicity and cause disease. What we already know from the literature is that CD5L is actually an inhibitor of a fatty acid synthesis pathway. What that means is it actually inhibits the making of uh, lipids and fatty acid in, inside the cell. So from this angle, we decided um, to ask the question really, what are the lipids that are being made in, in the T cells or being transported in, transported out? And so we did a comparison of non-pathogenic versus pathogenic pathogenic TH17 cells and found this really amazing correlation of the lipid profile of these cells and their function. And so from that angle, we started asking the question, well, does this lipid actually contribute the function? And we led to the conclusion eventually that depend on how much of the saturated fatty acids um, versus the unsaturated fatty acids you have or polyunsaturated fatty acids you have, you can actually now deter the functional fate of these TH17 cells. Mm -hmm. And in fact, depending on what kind of fatty acids you have, either saturated or polyunsaturated, you can decide whether the R gamma T is going to turn on uh, genes that are in the pro-inflammatory program or turn on the uh, regulatory program. So this really start would open up the field about addressing the question of can you influence um, a disease status and the T cell function by changing the environment that involves lipid, for example. Um, the other application comes from uh, TH17 cell itself in that it's being driven by uh, several transcription factors such as our gamma T, uh, which really direct the cell towards a particular lineage. And so my finding actually showed the lipid can specifically regulate this transcription factor towards different functions. Not just, it doesn't just inhibit or promote, but it can actually change its selection on what genes to turn on or turn off. So I think the strength of, of this is that you can actually not just look at general T817 differentiations or maintenance, but you can go after a specific process. So in our case, that's TH17 pathogenicity. And if you can figure out what regulates TH17 pathogenicity, you can also start figuring out you know, how you might tackle it, how you might prevent it.